Hi guys, so you've probably heard me talk about my to-do list before. Um, you know, it's a document that I keep that has my ideas and requests that I get and little notes to myself. And there are certain things that have been on there for such a long time that, you know, I look at them and I just kind of shake my head at myself. And the basic manicure tutorial is one of those things. It's been on my to-do list almost since I started my channel, and I wanted it to just be perfect. I wanted to plan out what I was going to say and hit all the points and, you know, do it so well that nobody would have any questions, and that's just unrealistic. Even if I did what I thought was perfect, I'm sure somebody would have a question. So I finally just sat down last night and did it. Um, with the color that's on my nails right now, this is OPI Swimsuit Nailed It from the Miss Universe collection. And if you would like to see some more pictures of this color, you can check out my blog post. I'll include that down in the information box. And you can also see on there, probably tonight I'll be topping it with a glitter so you can see if the purple glitter wins or if the silver holographic glitter wins. I haven't decided yet. One of those is going on top and there'll be pictures of that too by the time I post this up. So I basically just set up the camera and started recording as I painted my nails like I normally do and just talked my way through it. And like I said, I kind of gave up on that perfection. So there is also going to be a link to a blog post with all the stuff that I either forgot or did not have time to mention in the tutorial. Um, the blog post is going to talk about some other base coat options, some other top coat options, probably some other stuff that I haven't thought of yet because I haven't written it yet. So, you know, I always encourage you guys to check out the blog post for extra information, extra details and tips, and particularly with this one, and there will also be some notes in the annotations, so take a minute and read those. And if you still have questions, always feel free to leave a comment, and I will try to get back to you. So I hope you guys enjoy, and stay tuned. Alright guys, I really don't have this whole tutorial planned out. I'm just going to kind of get started and do as best as I can to talk my way through it as I go. The three main things, in my opinion, you're going to need for a basic manicure are a good base coat, uh, of course the color nail polish, and a good top coat. Now, in a pinch, if all you want to do is a color, um, you certainly can, but a base coat is going to help it uh, stay on your nails longer, also can help with staining, and a top coat is going to help to give it a really high gloss shine and also in certain cases dry faster. Um, in addition to those, of course you're going to need to remove any polish that's already on your nails. Make sure that your nails are clean and dry. You know, wash them off with soap and water and dry them off real well. Um, a couple other things that I have handy are an orange stick, some q-tips, my little dish that I fill up with a uh, polish remover, and I also have my cleanup brush. So the first thing that I'm just going to start out doing is pouring just a little bit of pure acetone in this dish. And it's a pretty small dish. I like it because it's stable. It's not, you know, going to tip over. And I just keep it off to the side with a little bit of polish remover in it. And then, even though you've just washed your hands, you know, and have hopefully gotten rid of any, you know, dirt or cuticle oil, anything like that, you could still have soap residue on your nails. So I'm actually just going to dip a Q-tip in the polish remover, and I'm just going to quickly go over the surface of each nail to make sure that it is completely clean, doesn't have any oil or anything like that on it and because 100 percent acetone dries really fast you know it'll also make sure that your nails are completely dry by the time you get back to that first nail 
So, and even though I have a few patches on, you know, it's such a thin layer, such a fast swipe that, you know, you're not in danger of removing your patches. So just make sure to get all the surfaces really nice and clean. Uh, the next step is going to be a base coat. And this is the one that I normally use. This is Nail Life Gripper. It's available at Sally Beauty. Um, I also have their Ridge Filler base coat and generally I save that for on my toes which have a little bit more ridges or certain polishes that really can show every imperfection in your nail like certain creams or holographic polishes and this is all a little harder with the camera so close but I wanted you guys to be able to see well I'm just gonna go ahead and you know start applying my base coat and I usually apply my nail polish in four sweeps you kind of want to make sure to do as few strokes as possible overstroking can lead to bubbles and going once down the middle and then each side and then the middle again just works well for me um, certain polishes certain color polishes um, you know, show brush strokes more. In certain cases, I will skip the first middle stroke, just do side, side, and then middle again. But, you know, you don't have to do everything exactly like me. I never want you guys to feel, you know, like I'm the end all expert on this. You know, do whatever works for you. And just keep in mind that kind of the fewer strokes you can keep it to, the better. Um,. Now as for doing your left hand, or using your left hand and painting your right hand, or vice versa, if you're left handed, the best advice I really can give is just practice. Um, I'm not always that stable with my left hand, but the thing to keep in mind is if you can just learn to do a straight stroke, you can kind of move your other hand you know, so that that straight stroke goes in the right place, if that makes sense. So that you're just going, going really smooth, and just like with the other hand, keeping as few strokes as possible. And, I mean, I do my nails multiple times a week, and I have been for a couple of years now, so I am pretty good with it. You know, if you have trouble, just you know keep at it there's no secret to it in my opinion no magic way that's going to make you um instantly good with your off hand now this gripper is a sticky base coat which means that it kind of grips the polish it helps it stick to your nail and it's not really going to dry to a perfectly dry finish it's always going to feel a little bit sticky and that's a good thing so that the polish grips to your nail. So usually I won't even really give it much time to dry um, except with certain finishes of polish and you'll probably hear me doing a lot of I do this except or I do this unless. Um, polishes like hollows require a really dry base coat Matte polishes also require a really dry base coat. In fact, many matte bottles will say that you shouldn't even use a base coat. But usually if you let the base coat dry completely, you'll be okay. I'm going to start in with the color. And the color that I'm using is from OPI. This is from their Miss Universe collection. And it's called Swimsuit Nailed It. And... OPI does have one of my favorite brushes. Of course, many people know that they also have a really good formula, generally speaking. Um, I don't feel like you can ever just say, oh, this brand always has a good formula because there's always going to be an exception. Now, when I paint, the first thing you'll probably see is that I don't go all the way down to my cuticle. That's just personal preference. And the next thing is that I'm going to swipe across the tip here, and that's called wrapping the tip. Um, and I'll explain both of those a little more as I move on to my other fingers. 
with leaving a gap at the cuticle, um, it's a neatness thing. You know, I think it looks better. And it also helps when you're removing polish not to have it all pooled up next to your cuticle, you know, in like a big ridge. Um, as for wrapping your tip, that is a trick that I learned once I started blogging. And basically the, I guess if you want to call it the science behind it, is that polish is going to chip at the edge of the polish. And if the edge is slightly under your nail, then it's less vulnerable than if it's right at the tip of your nail. So once you do the strokes, and I'll see if I can get a camera angle here, can you see how the, f the front of my nail is bare there? You just want to barely swipe along the edge with the brush and get some color on it. You don't really get it much on the underside. Um, sometimes there might be a little bit, but you're mainly just going for that very edge of your nail. And again, that's a personal preference. If you want to skip it, that's fine. Um, but you know, with wrapping my tips, I do find when I do wear polish longer, I can go up to a week or longer with um, no chipping. Um, some people might do that for every coat of polish, um, including the base coat. I usually just do it for the first coat of color and also my top coat. And I try to be as neat as possible when I'm painting. But if you can see, I got a little on the side of my pinky there. If you do, you can ignore it and clean it up once it's dry. You can take an orange stick and just kind of clean it up like that. Um, one trick I do have is that when you're painting, try to place your bottle somewhere that you're not going to knock into it as you stroke. Um, there have been a lot of times when I've messed up my manicure just by accidentally knocking into the bottle and putting a big ding right in my fresh manicure. And again with my left hand painting my right hand, I'm just going slow and as you see kind of moving my right hand almost more than my left hand. Just practice doing that straight stroke with your off hand and roll your other hand to accommodate so that you get even coverage and you know don't be in a rush you're going to waste more time rushing than if you just do it right the first time so and with my thumbs here that's another personal preference um, this is partly so you can see on the camera sorry there's my wonderful camera um, I do usually hold my thumb like this while I'm painting it rather than try to put my hand at an angle that I can lay it flat to the table. Um, and again, that's just personal preference. Some people I know hold their hand like this and stroke toward themselves. If that's more comfortable for you, feel free to uh, go that route. So I'm just going to let this polish dry for a few minutes and that is something that's going to vary slightly with each color um, you know each brand and you know you just as as you paint your nails more and more you just get kind of a feel the first layer doesn't have to be completely dry before you do the second layer you just want it dry enough that when you stroke on a second layer you're not taking up the first layer you're not leaving bald patches behind the brush so I'm gonna give this probably not even five minutes, just enough so that it's dry to the touch and dry enough for me to put a second coat on. Alright, so it's been a few minutes and I'm going to get started applying my second coat here. And with both of these coats, I always go with thinner is better. You know, three thin coats is going to be better than two really thick coats it's going to wear better, you're going to have less bubbling and you know with certain exceptions I'll always try to follow that rule if I'm in a really big hurry sometimes I'll try and do thicker coats and usually I'll regret it um, because that is one of the things that can cause bubbling in a normal manicure if the coat is too thick or if you don't allow enough time in between coats for it to dry. 
Um, one of the other things that can cause it is if you shake your polish right before you apply it and the bubble, bubbles haven't had time to settle out of the polish. So just keep those things in mind when you're painting your nails. Like I said, if you're patient, it will pay off rather than trying to hurry and then messing something up and having to do it over again. Okay, so both hands now have two coats of polish on, and for this particular polish, that's going to be enough. Um, I don't see any bald patches, I don't see any uh, VNL, or visible nail line as it's called, and I'm going to do just a little bit of cleanup. Now for most people, this step could probably be skipped, or you could do like I showed with the orange stick earlier. But since I do have a blog and I do take really close up pictures of my nails, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up any little excess on the sides, any little mistakes with my brush dipped in acetone. Uh, basically just like I do for a water marble, although it's obviously not as messy. Um, you can also use a Q-tip to do this. You can use an orange stick with a bit of cotton wrapped around the edge. And, like I said, you can skip it. You can scrub off the polish in the morning, you know, like in the shower. And I'm not sure, that was kind of a bad camera angle. I just go all around the edge, all around the cuticle, and... Like I said, mainly because I'm going to be taking super close-up pictures, macro shots of these nails for my blog, and so I like everything to be as neat as possible. Um, this is another thing where when you're working with your offhand, just go slowly. Try to keep it just as simple of a straight stroke as you can, and practice. Um, Having a good tool makes it easier to do a good job. Um, this shape of a brush, you know, is kind of a, a flat, stiff brush. So it goes right along the edge of the cuticle really easy. As opposed to like a Q-tip that has a round end, um, you know, which also might leave some fuzz behind. So, whether you do this step or not is up to you. Um, if you're not taking any pictures of your nails, you might want to skip it. Um, like I think I've mentioned before, acetone can be really drying for your nails, so you don't want to overdo it. And you do always want to moisturize afterwards. Um, usually, unless I've, I'm dealing with a polish that's really... Uh, slow drying or that I've done like maybe three coats on as soon as I'm done with my cleanup it's dry enough to apply my top coat I am using Sesh Viet I pretty much always use Sesh Viet and Sesh Viet is a quick drying top coat that also has one of the best um, shines probably out there um, it just makes any polish look amazing and it's also self-leveling which means that if you have a polish that's maybe not too smooth it will smooth it out for you and with my top coat I'm not just wrapping my tips I'm also wrapping uh, my sidewalls and like I said that just helps to prevent chipping and it also helps just a bit to reinforce your nail because really after you know four coats of polish 
your nail is thicker than it is when it's just bare naked. And nail polish also helps to protect your nails um, from dryness. Like if you work in an office, the polish will kind of lock the moisture into your nails. And one of the reasons I never go without polish is because every time in the past where I've tried to, you know, just make a quick trip to the grocery store or something, I'll do something totally stupid because I'm a huge klutz and I'll chip a nail or break a nail and it's usually something that I know would not have resulted in a break if I'd had polish on. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the top coat here. that some of that I think was out of frame but it's like the camera is exactly where I would normally be putting my hand um, now Sesh Feet is a quick drying top coat and this first pinky that I did is dry to the touch now that does not mean that it's completely dry if you were to really you know gouge into these nails you would still be able to dent them but they're not as delicate as you know just brushing against them is going to leave a fingerprint or a smudge. You know, within I'd say five to ten minutes after applying Sesh Feet, you are good to go to bed as long as you don't, you know, sleep with your hands underneath your pillow. You know, I often do my nails right before bed and don't have to worry about any sheet marks or anything like that. So, yeah, I guess that's it. These are steps as far as the base and top coat that I always take. Um, you know, whether I'm doing a plain manicure, conad, water marble, whatever kind of nail art, I'm always going to start out with a base and a top coat. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's really been on my to-do list for such a long time. I'm sure I've forgotten some things, so please check out the information box and the blog post. And until next time, thanks for watching.